Now, Louise Brown, the world's first person to be born through IVF, will celebrate her 40th birthday this week. She'll be speaking later at a press conference ahead of an event, the IVF at 40, which will take place at the London Science Museum later this week. Born in 1978, not only did her birth cause a worldwide sensation, but it also sparked a controversial debate about the procedure, which has endured ever since. While exact figures for just how many babies have been born through IVF is still unknown, it's thought that the figure is somewhere between 6 to 8 million, with new arrivals every day. Well, joining me now to tell us more is Joyce Harper, Professor of Human Genetics and Embryology at the University College of London. Thank you very much uh, for joining us on the program. Now, I think we've, we see that figure, 6 to 8 million IVF babies. We've come a long way, right? I mean, how far do you think IVF uh, has to go? Well, it's really unknown. Um, it's been an amazing 40 years. And quite interestingly, when Louise Brown was first born, there was a lot of controversy and people thought that the technology was really going beyond what medicine should do. And 40 years on, as you've said, we've got six to eight million children. My own three children were born from IVF as well. So the future, the next 40 years, there are many exciting events on the horizon, a lot around genetic testing. And uh, it's really going to be an exciting time to see where the next 40 years is going to take us. Indeed, exciting in science, but as it is with all these, with new things in science, there's a lot of debate uh, surrounding this. And in Europe, that debate hasn't stopped uh, in some of the countries here. Uh, Poland is an example. I think this is, is still a hotly contested uh, procedure. What, what is, where is the debate now? Well, I'm part of the Nuffield Council on Bioethics uh, working group on genome editing. We've just released a document last week that we've been working on for 20 months. And we've got a conference today and this is something that could really change the face of fertility uh, treatment, where we could actually um, edit the genome for those carrying genetic diseases such as beta thalassemia. So this is something that's really on the horizon. And there are many other techniques that could try and help people have a healthy family. Yeah, and in terms of accessibility, I just want to ask you, you know, is everyone, does everyone have this equal accessibility at the moment or is cost still a hindrance? Cost is absolutely still a hindrance. In the UK, we aim to have two to three cycles for um, couples around the UK, but this is not uniform at all. The technique is expensive, and within Europe and the rest of the world, it really varies. Some countries funding even more than three cycles, and some funds, countries funding not, none at all. So we really have a huge discrepancy, and that's something that the UK is certainly working on, trying to make this equal access so that those that need to have fertility treatment can indeed have it and have a much dream for family. All right. Thank you very much for your insight there. Joyce Harper, Professor of Human Genetics and Embryology at University College London. Thanks.